Do we need a paradigm shift? Well, let's hear it from our expert. Sundar is the director for VCE applications in KPIT. Uh, he has over 22 years experience in supply chain operations and IT consulting, especially in ASEAN region. He has a diverse experience around supply chains, also includes an insider view of how alternate technology solutions are increasingly making supply chain execution better. Thanks a lot for your presence today, and uh, good afternoon to all of you. My, my colleague Harish just spoke about the transportation bit in terms of uh, what it uh, delivers from a perspective of logistics execution. I would be focusing on what warehousing solutions bring to the table from a shipper and from a, a service provider's perspective. All these aspects of supply chain execution gain more and more prominence as Thailand and indeed the entire geography step into AEC 2015. This is the time when we feel that organizations across the region will need to adopt best of breed solutions more than you know, individual platforms they will need to look at, uh, more than individual point solutions they will need to look at platforms which manage the entire breadth of supply chain execution. Transportation is one bit. We, we saw that close to about 40% of your logistics costs are uh, linked to transportation. Warehousing is, is the next biggest bit, close to 25% of your logistics cost. On an average, based on some of these uh, studies, organizations expend on warehousing. So having said that, uh, the idea is just not to be talking about just these two particular uh, solution sets in mind, but we do believe that doing the last mile better takes you farther ahead in terms of your rivals, in terms of competition, helps you manage your businesses better, and readies you to manage global trade in a much more competitive and much more profitable manner. I guess all of us are here in business to sort of make monies. And I think this is one big step that companies are increasingly taking in terms of uh, uh, unlocking values from their supply chain. As I said, supply chain used to be often ignored in the past. And uh, as I said, supply chain was synonymous with disruption. Some well-documented case studies are out here. I'll not go into all of these, but you know, typically, Webvan was a company uh, based in the US. They were uh, an online grocer, had very ambitious plans, great funding, and boom, they just went away. The ostensible reason was that they did not expend their resources in the right manner. They had increased their levels of automation, the levels of investment in terms of infrastructure, all of that without really taking into account what the market needed at that point in time. And, and they just fell down the tube. Adidas, uh, Adidas obviously is, is one of the most well-run companies today, but uh, if you look at in, in 1996, Adidas chose a warehouse management solution. They chose a wrong solution, did not meet their requirements, and then they went and chose another solution, which again did not meet their requirements, and they invested in the wrong kind of automation and, and had to pay the penalty in terms of you know, significant drop in uh, uh, bottom lines and profits and all of that. All of us, I guess, uh, you know, especially people from the industry are aware in terms of, uh, you know, loss sale, you know, order fills being bad and all of that, especially during, you know, seasonal, uh, uh, seasonal uh, uh, push sales push and all of that. So Toys R Us, Hershey's, all these are examples where, uh, you know, the organization just could not take into they had this leather glove manufacturing facilities uh, operations based out of Philippines, Manila. And uh, they, 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 they did, they, in order to rejig their supply chain, they invested in a whole lot of, uh, uh, you know, 
low-cost country sourcing or something like that, as, as you know, we're all uh, aware of. They did this and paid the penalty in terms of poor quality, poor service delivery, extremely uh, irate customers, and at the end of the day, they were bought out by someone else. These are some of the typical examples, but we see these happening day in, day out, even these days. Some transition, of course, is, is happening, and, and that is where, you know, typically as supply chain professionals, we've learned from experience. We could be a little more proactive, but yes, some transition has been happening. What would be earlier a paradigm of just uh, intra-organization intra focus in terms of, you know, you look inward into the organization, you have a single point of focus in terms of managing your operations more efficiently within the organization and, uh, you know, unlocking efficiencies from, from your various departments, functions, and all of that. I think we are doing that very well. Organizations have done that extremely well now, thanks to the support of the ERPs which are available. But now, given that there are these cross-country movements, something like AEC 2015, that's going to happen, it's going to break trade barriers. You're therefore not yourself. You're yourself with a set of you know, people behind you in terms of your suppliers, their, their suppliers, your customers, your retailers, your distributors, and all of that. So your value chain has extended beyond the realms of just being you as an entity or you as a unit. It, it involves a broader ecosystem of uh, partners that you will need to cater to. That is where intra-organizational efficiencies are going to be significantly changing to mean inter-tenant capabilities. And if you look at the, the, uh, the picture down, down below, it, it's a whole lot of uh, multi-party multi, uh, multi relationships which are happening. This is the way organizations are going to start managing their businesses. And I guess for, e for each of you in this room, at some point in time with, with the breaking of all the barriers across the region, you're going to be having your sourcing happening from, from, from uh, Myanmar and, and you know, shipping your uh, inventory to somewhere else, into Malaysia or something like that, whereas Thailand is used as a hub for manufacturing. So this is an imminent change which is going to happen, and uh, one of the thoughts that we have uh, as part of this course of the presentation is, is organizations will need to focus on something into their warehousing operations, which enables them collaborate with their partners across the value chain. So, this is just trying to repeat what we said earlier, but in all of this, we are talking of a new set of partners, you're talking of collaboration across tenants in a supply chain, but in all of this, the entire idea is that the financial model that organizations go through becomes more transparent, less risky, you get paid for, for what you have produced by your, by your customers who may be across two different geographies, but you get paid on time. You, you are not waiting perennially under the assumption that you know, stocks will be in transit or have been dispatched properly, rejections happening. The, the, the question of uh, you know, dubious information, incorrect information, and you know, multiple versions of the truth is obviated. So we have now moved from a situation, or we are moving in from a situation of, you know, within organization-based uh, solutions, as in, you know, ERPs, to something much more. You are talking of an ERP++ model, and that++ model is what I call as the logistics management platform. And this platform is essentially constituted by your transportation OTM that we, we refer to uh, some time back. And, and as well as the Oracle WMS platform uh, solution that, that I'm going to talk about in the next few minutes. What it enables is better integration, better collaboration, better ownership, better transparency, agility, and speed. This is a typical evolution chain in terms of how warehousing has evolved over time. If you look at right down below, I'm not sure if it's too clear, but what, what 
you're trying to say is that in those days, you know, maybe 10 years back, you had less complexity with the business that you were managing. You had fewer orders. Your orders were, you know, not were easily doable in terms of fulfilling your customer requirements. You probably had more time to deliver them. Your customers were easy going as well. Probably uh, you did not deliver on time. Yeah, they, they forgave you. And uh, you did not ship the right stock, but you, you, uh, you know, were apologetic about it and you replaced the stock with, all of, uh, with, uh, uh, with the right stock after some time. All this was taken for granted, acceptable then. At which point in time, your warehouses were called as go-downs. You could generally throw your pile of inventory right across in, inside your, uh, uh, you know, inside the uh, facility. No stacking norms, no kind of uh, location identification systems. Everything that you did was in the head of persons who were handling it. That is changing, has changed significantly. And therefore, since that change has evolved in the warehousing space in terms of better efficiencies and fulfillment uh, uh, expertise have, uh, you know, being demanded by customers, and it's driven by customers, also driven past possibly because a lot of our organizations in Thailand today are servicing requirements of clients abroad as well. So the, the West dictates the terms in terms of what, what is to be uh, you know, done, and that change which organizations have embarked upon is incomplete without the right technology enablement. And that is where, if you look at the yellow color box out there, we, we are straddling the space in terms of more and more complex orders, more and more uh, uh, disposition uh, rules in terms of products and you know, handling rules. At the same time, your costs are going to be very tightly monitored because your profits are decreasing. And, and every pie that you, spy, uh, you, you save is, is adding to your bottom line is going to help you in growth. This box is the box that we are talking that we will need to graduate as a forum into managing things better, into managing things more efficiently in a more cost sensitive fashion and dealing with global standards basically. That is where we need advanced warehousing capabilities, and that is incomplete without warehouse management solutions. So what are these warehouse management solutions? Many of you would be aware, but uh, you know, uh, at the risk of sound, uh, sounding repetitive, but I will still do that. It integrates barcoding technology, mobile, mobile equipment, and, and is uh, having a lot of sophisticated uh, you know, feature functionalities around it in terms of how you manage your operations within the warehouse. Yeah, great. It is designed to enable better sa customer satisfaction. Yeah, end of the day, everything has to happen in, in such a fashion that your customers still are with you. Importantly, as Logistics costs increase as a percentage of GDP or even as a percentage of uh, revenue uh, 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 sales. You are going to watch every aspect of how you control your space, how you control your uh, manpower, the kind of equipment that you hire uh, or uh, buy, and the technology that you're going to use. You're going to watch it very carefully. Warehouse management solutions are designed to bring that kind of uh, shift paradigm shift, so to say, in terms of how you manage your operations within a warehouse. And, and yeah, that goes without saying that when you do those things better, obviously there are happier customers. Uh, you know, your sales guys are probably happier as well. But what is not a WMS? Typically in those days, I remember I was heading a supply chain for a, a multinational based out of uh, Indonesia sometime 10 years back, we managed our supply chain with the ERP. We, we were quite lackadaisical in our approach with what we did inside the warehouse. 10 years back, we did not have best of breed, best in class warehousing solutions. But there came a time when we had to absorb a lot of uh, demand from Europe into the ASEAN region. 
at which point the customer expectations, the sensitivities involved change very dramatically. What we would do in the normal course was not acceptable anymore. Everything became different right from the labels you generated, right from your quality norms that you, that, that, uh, you manage, the documentation you did, the communication you did, all of that changed very dramatically in a course of six months because a global supply chain was being uprooted from Europe and being based out of uh, uh, Indonesia, Thailand, and China. The first four months were a disaster, but we then realized that it was not going to work this way. We had to go and invest into a lot of infrastructure in terms of uh, warehousing space, racking equipment, storage, and material handling equipment, and right technology as well to manage it. Because customers in the West are going to be very different from the customers that we, we, have been, we had been used to handling earlier. Importantly, we would have done all of this infrastructure, but, but we, we took the decision at that point in time to actually invest in best-in-class warehouse management systems. There were one or two of them available at that time. Today, you have much more mature, much more sophisticated software like Oracle. But at that point in time, we had to actually make do with what we had. But having said that, we were able to do justice to the entire value chain in terms of shifting a high cost production manufacturing base from, from Europe into Western Europe into ASEAN. And I guess something like AEC 2015 is going to bring a lot of such opportunities for all markets like Thailand, like Indonesia and all of these. So with, in combination with infrastructure and you know, uh, equipment, technology, the right appropriate technology, which gets you the ROI is something extremely critical and uh, uh, has a significant role to play in terms of how the business gets managed. The WMS as warehouse management system is not an MRP solution. It is not a stock locator solution. People tend to, you know, use these uh, uh, phrases interchangeably. WMS is much more sophisticated than all of that. Essentially, what we're trying to do is optimize the use of the product, uh, of the, optimize the use of the resources within a warehouse much more efficiently by using system-directed operations, either through mobile devices or, or through equipment in terms of handling. Most of you would be familiar with what warehousing uh, uh, processes are, but I'll quickly take you through that. Uh, you know, it's a pretty scientific laid out, uh, uh, scientifically laid out process that warehouses follow right from, you know, pre-receiving your orders from your uh, uh, suppliers, receiving the inventory from your su suppliers, then, uh, you know, checking them in into the warehouse, putting them into the right location based on whatever rules you've configured in the system, then, you know, having a right count of this inventory and, and it, it enables you to have a look at the system and it tells you where exactly are you going to, you know, position your product based on the rules that you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, configured for, for the uh, product in question. And going on to, you know, employing the right kind of picking strategies for a product and uh, disposition rules till order culmination is achieved. The Oracle WMS does all of these, maybe offline after the discussion, uh, after the uh, uh, program is through during our networking sessions, we could talk more about this, but yes, the fact is that we're talking of some very intricate, very deep and very uh, extended, expanded uh, uh, functionality that we are referring to. And what does it achieve? It optimizes the way we do things in the warehouse. And by, by optimizing the warehouse uh, operations, I mean that you have better space management, you have better order management, you have better resource management in terms of labor force. 
you do have an opportunity to relook at the number of people who are engaged in terms of operations. Because all of this is adding to cost. And, and at the same time, you save on fuel. By, by efficient warehousing management systems, you are able to communicate better with your carriers, your transporters, and ensure that you have the right kind of vehicles, the right kind of uh, uh, fleet available for taking your inventory to your customers. The essential tenets on which the Oracle WMS has been built have been that A, it has to be adaptable to a scenario which, which is good for today, but it's good for tomorrow as well. It is in a position, it's, it's, a, it's a solution which helps you manage your businesses without changing your processes. The entire idea in terms of the solution is most of your processes can be modeled out using configurable rules and strategies. And, and, and things just keep going in a free flow mode once you do that. It helps you converge into a platform. As in, one of the key things that, th uh, that, are, that is going to differentiate you from competition is the fact that you have a logistics platform which does an integrated and synchronized execution of your operations from a warehouse until inventory reaches your end customer. The WMS is an essential ingredient of the platform that we are referring to here. And C, uh, the third tenet on which it has been built is the fact that it has been built with some very robust technology uh, from, from the Oracle stack. It, it, it is ready for today. Importantly, it is ready for tomorrow. When your business grows fivefold, or if you're actually going into a different set of verticals and customers and all of that, the WMS is easily configurable to manage all of these scenarios. With a single instance, you can manage multiple warehouses, multi-tenant customers, and automate operations for all of these, giving them specific accesses, giving them specific rules, and still charge them based on what you have uh, you know, negotiated with them. Operational efficiencies in terms of utilization of space, labor, all that I've spoken about earlier, these are a given. Importantly, it helps you integrate with your end customers because the essence of the whole paradigm shift we're talking about is it has got to somewhere include all your networking partners. And, and a solution like the Oracle WMS helps you achieve that. Some key metrics which we feel are achievable. In terms of order fulfillment, staff productivity, efficiency, and accuracy. And all of these at extremely aggressive returns on investment. So what did the doctor order? A paradigm shift is, of course, needed. It is imminent. It has to happen. Companies will need to embrace this sooner than later. It has to be inclusive. By inclusive, I mean that you as leaders representing big industrial organizations here will probably have to carry the mantle for close to more than 90% of the Thai SMB uh, businesses, which will need the support of technology from providers, service providers, and, and uh, bigger companies in the value chain to sort of go one notch higher than where they are currently. I would therefore urge that a forum like this provides a kind of a repeatable template for thought leadership in terms of how the enablement of the goals of AAC 2015 can be achieved. Sooner than later, we, I think most of you should be talking of logistics strategies on a platform and not as point solutions. And unlock potential from your supply chains improve profitability.
just a closing slide on my organization. KPIT, we are an IT services provider and a consulting company, close to about 8,500 uh, people. We are based in around 30 countries worldwide. We are partners with uh, DSAT in uh, Thailand as well. And we do believe that, you know, there's an opportunity that exists for all of us in this exciting journey of, you know, taking the next leap towards technology execution for companies based on Thailand. Thank you so much for your patience.